If you're like me, you probably have a pile of wood laying around your house. And if you're like me, you don't want to throw it away. So I looked at my pile of wood and I said, I'm going to challenge myself to something cool and something different. First, we're going to glue these two pieces together with hot glue so that when I cut them, they cut as one whole piece. And I've got here my little template. I'm going to lay it down there, making sure that I leave space for my blade to cut around. So all we're going to do is just use a marker, and I'm not worried about the marker because I can always sand back whatever excess I have, but it's much easier to follow a marker when you're cutting out wood than it is with a pencil. And if you see, I'm not exactly right on the line in places. I'm not worried about it because I'm going to come back with a sander and clean that up. The same way that we cut the pieces of wood together, we're going to sand them together so that they remain exactly the same shape until we're ready to separate them. In keeping with the theme of offcuts or trim pieces to create our birdhouse, I found these pieces laying around and they're literally pieces left over from when I've ripped bigger pieces of wood. So this particular piece is a half an inch and I think it's going to be great for our roof and this particular piece is a quarter inch and it's going to be perfect for our sides and our bottoms. So I've already decided I want them to be seven inches long so I will mark it out and then I'm going to show you a little carpenter's trick. Seven inches. When you cut wood that's this dimension with a big heavy powerful saw like this one the wood can snap out of your hands. To avoid that from happening, what we're going to do is we're going to use an extra sacrificial piece. I'll lay down my wood and exactly where I'm going to cut, I'm going to protect the cut with the other piece of wood behind it. When I cut through, this bigger piece of wood is going to hold our smaller piece of wood in place. It won't snap out and we'll feel safe in our whole process. So now we've got two pieces, and all we're going to do is decide which one you like best, and then we're going to drill our hole for the door with a Forstner bit. The Forstner bit is actually a cabinet finishing detail bit. It doesn't break through the wood as easily, and it gives you a really nice, clean cut. Now. If you happen to have a spade bit, that will work just as well. You're just going to have to do a little bit more sanding around your hole. In this case, I'm using an inch and a quarter bit because I've done my research and that's what birds like, that size hole. Not too big and not too small. I'm also positioning the hole two and a quarter inches up from the bottom because when they actually lay eggs, the nest is going to be down here, and if it's up too low or too high, the baby birds can actually fall out of the nest. We've got all our wood cut to the same length. In this case, it's seven inches. You might want to change yours a little bit based on your design. But now what we want to do is ensure that all of our nails go right in line. So all we want to do is mark our wood so we know where the nail's going to seed in when we go to put the birdhouse together. So I already know I want a quarter inch overhang. My wood is three quarters of an inch. In the middle of that would be five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to mark 5 eighths of an inch on this side and 5 eighths of an inch on this side. And then I'm going to go right into the middle, 3 eighths right in the middle and 3 eighths right in the middle. Now I know you're saying, Carmen, really you want me to do every one of these pieces over and over again? Here's a trick. So now that we've got it marked, I'm just going to do a little tap tap with my owl right in the middle. That's where my nail's going to go. 
and another little tap tap. Now I'm going to make a template. I'm going to use a 16th inch drill bit and I'm going to drill into here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We've got our two holes marked and now I don't have to do it over and over again. This is my template. I'll just line up my wood and drill right in from the back of the other one. And we'll repeat that until we get all our pieces pre-drilled. One of my new fun techniques that I've been doing a lot of different things with is called so shugiban. So shugiban is an old Japanese craft that it actually means to burn or char the wood. And what this does for us is two things. It waterproofs the wood and it also helps preserve the wood so that it doesn't rot out over time with the moisture. So shugiban looks amazing on its own, and if you seal it, you'll get a little bit more contrast. But I love color, so I'm going to add a little bit of red. Now, if I use a solid red paint, it's going to paint right over it, and you won't see the so shugiban. So what we're going to do is change the paint into a tint stain. Very easily, I'm using a water-based stain, and I'm just going to add a little bit more water to make it more runny or viscous. And you almost want it to be like ink or a watercolor. We're just using it to tint the wood. We've painted our front and back panels. Now we're ready to put it together. So we've got exterior grade glue. By using exterior grade glue, we ensure that our house stays put together for longer. I'm choosing to use little copper nails. I just think it looks cooler and it just adds another pop of color to our already textured birdhouse. And I'm also going to use these quarter inch little pieces of masonite board that I've cut in advance because we talked about having a little bit of an overhang on the front of our birdhouse, right? So instead of trying to hold it so that I don't move my quarter inch, I don't have to think because I'm just going to let the masonite board, which is a quarter inch, do the work for me. So I'm going to start right here and on every single piece we're going to want to put just a little bit of glue and then once I line it up because I've got the spacer I can nail it in and it will automatically give me that little bit of profile that I need. Now I need to worry about getting the whole thing positioned so I'm just going to put one piece at the bottom end with my thinner piece of wood so that this holds my spacing on the whole birdhouse as I'm working my way around. And you can just sight where it goes. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Now we've got our structure. It's much easier to deal with. We'll continue to do all of the top with the thicker pieces, and then we'll work our way around the bottom with the thinner pieces. Roof line is on with the thicker pieces of trim piece. I purposely chose a thinner piece because when I then round the curve and start to put the lower section on, the rain will weep off of the sides and you won't get rain inside. Kind of like a house.
So there you have it, Carpentry 101 project. So use that scrap wood, be creative, and have fun. And for more projects like this, visit FamilyHandyMan.com.